Hi, this is your host Apni Bharatiya and welcome to TFL Let's Talk. And today we have with us once again, Margaret Hoogland, VP of Global Sales and Marketing at Sios Technology. Margaret, it's great to have you back on the show. Thank you, Swap. It's great to be back. It's my pleasure to host you again. And today we are going to talk about the release of LifeKeeper for Linux version 9.9.0. Can you tell us a bit about what exactly is Sios LifeKeeper for Linux? Sure. LifeKeeper for Linux is a high availability clustering software that protects critical applications from downtime and disasters. So if you're running SQL Server, Oracle, uh, SAP, HANA, that kind of very important application, um, if there is a reason for it to fail, whether that's a major, major a disaster or a minor incident within your box, uh, SIOS will protect it and allow it to continue to operate. And can you now talk about what are some of the new features in this release? Biggest feature that is in the new release is an advanced disaster recovery um, capability that allows the uh, user to set up a three or four node cluster um, stretched across um, AWS availability zones, and regions. So you can have some uh, two nodes locally and one uh, geographically far away for disaster protection. And uh, a high degree of automation is included in this product that will manage the process of moving from the primary server where the application is running. If something happens to that server, it will move operation to the secondary server. And then if that's necessary to uh, change to uh, add additional disaster recovery protection will fail over to the distant site. Um, it offers the ability to do so uh, with replication that's either synchronous, asynchronous, or what we call memory synchronous. Um, so it's a, a very flexible uh, configuration options that you've, you're given. Can you also talk about when you look at sites like people for Linux, how does it make life easy for IT administrators in order to improve their you know, high availability in DR? Sure, in a number of ways. And so IT administrators um, are faced with the challenge of managing a fairly complex environment when you're talking about high availability, regardless of who you're using for your high availability solution. Um, if you think about what it takes to keep an application up and running, everything underneath it from the network to the operating system to the operating the um, storage has to be up and running and compatible. Anything goes wrong in any one or more of those particular layers of the infrastructure and you have application level downtime. So uh, it's one of the few uh, circumstances that look across the full stack, the full application environment. Um, so SIO's products uh, add a level of automation for ease of use, um, uh, a degree of added information and guidance to help customers configure these products more easily and avoid common human errors in configuration, and to provide uh, guidance should there be a problem on how to troubleshoot and resolve the issue quickly and efficiently. And above all else, um, uh, we have application awareness. Um, so we have application recovery kits. There are some plug-in modules for leading applications that contain all the information that are specific to that application um, that will result in failover from one node to another in a very, very reliable and effective manner, very fast and reliable. Um, so that when your critical application um, does fail, it comes back online very quickly and with great degree of reliability with our product. And if I'm not wrong, this release has kind of an emphasis on enhanced disaster recovery and performance optimization. Uh, can you talk about uh, uh, these two things, how it helps and what is the importance of these two factors, once again, for IT teams? We measure our success in terms of recovery time objective and recovery point objective, as well as availability. So recovery time objective, how quickly do we bring application back online? Do you go from a downtime incident to back and fully operational? Uh, recovery point objective, 
Um, how current is the data when you restore your operation? Have we lost much data in the process? And availability. In a given year of 100% uptime, uh, if there is a, a minute of downtime, how many nines, 99.9%, 99.99% .99%, uh, and so forth, uh, are we delivering for availability of that application? So we deliver at least four nines of availability. Uh, Sios automates the whole process of disaster recovery where the failover from A to B is happening, the failover from uh, the replication from A to B and A to C happens. And if there is an is issue on the A node, the, the primary node, um, that switch over to B replicating to C, the, the disaster recovery node, all happens automatically without manual intervention. And that's a, a huge um, benefit to customers. I mean, the talk a lot about automation these days. Uh, can you, one of the features that I, when I was going through, you know, some of the features is also intelligent failover for added reliability. Can you just go a bit deeper into this aspect of this release? So in a typical clustering environment, you're running your application on a primary server, and that is clustered with, connected to, a secondary server that looks a lot like it. And to make sure that um, the health of all of the uh, components is uh, sufficient for a, a reliable and healthy failover, um, our product does an analysis and makes sure that the data is synchronized and the secondary server is healthy and appropriate for a failover to happen. It saves time, it makes sure that the failover is reliable, and it uh, protects the environment in a in much more uh, robust manner. And one of the things that administrators, you know, kind of lose their sleep on is security. Can you also talk about if and what are the new security management features uh, which are added to this release? So we now allow customers to choose um, one of two uh, very uh, industry standard means of um, administrators giving security privileges through um, SU, which is uh, a more widely used and um, older command, um, versus sudo, which is a, a newer uh, capability. Either one of them are industry standard. Um, customers can choose which they feel most comfortable with. Um, Sios will support them. Uh, sudo uh, is newer to our um, product in this release. It allows customers to, um, in cases where an administrator needs to give an individual more privileges, a higher level of access, um, they can assign those privileges while the owner maintains their own identity and the IT person is able to monitor and get a history of all the ac actions that were taken by that person with their temporary added privileges. Um, so it's a, a greater means of control over the environment. Um, if they customers are still using SU or SU, S -S -U, um, which has been around a little bit longer, they can still use that. That um, has a different means of allowing customers to provide those privileges, essentially making them um, assume the identity of an administrator with broad privileges. So the IT administrator has less control over that individual's use of the higher level of privileges. It's a customer's choice now. They can pick whichever one they want and Sios will um, allow you to use the security commands of choice. Can you also talk about if there are any new Linux distributions that you are now supporting? Uh, sure, we've got several new um, distributions added to our support matrix. Uh, the latest is uh, SLES 15 SP6, uh, Amazon Linux 2023, Alma Linux 9.4. Uh, we've added um, WebSphere MQ935, as well as uh, some new environments, vSphere 8 Update 3. Um, we have uh, Hyper-V uh, Advanced 
application recovery kit, um, Nutanix AHV, a newer version of that, and uh, vSphere 8 updates 1 and 2. So those are very specific. Uh, can you talk about what other features uh, that are being added? So we talked about how uh, IT people need more support and more control over their environment. And so we have a web console that allows us to add all sorts of new features with every release. This release, we chose to add two new languages, um, Korean and German, um, in addition to Japanese and English. And we will continue to build out languages that are um, throughout the interface. So customers can feel very comfortable in their own language um, and it adds to a, an ease of use. Margaret, once again, thank you so much for joining me today and give us an update on Cyrus Lifekeeper for Linux. Thanks for a great insight. And as usual, I look forward to chatting with you again. Thank you. Thank you, Swap. It's a pleasure.